إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أما بعد Indeed, all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Him, we thank Him, we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evils of ourselves. We seek help, forgiveness, we devote our attention, time, devotion, all to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Divine, the Almighty. And I remind you, dear brothers and dear sisters, to fear Allah the way He should be feared, and do not die except in the state of Al Islam. As for what is to proceed, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in a group of verses which are extremely powerful, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala starts these verses off in a very, very powerful manner as well. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. No. Now let me ask himself that whenever I'm reading the Quran, I am reading it to know something. In fact, whenever I'm reading anything, any worldly book or religious book, any material at all, I'm reading it to know something. But Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, in certain places in the Quran, He emphasizes the fact that He wants you to remember this right here. Know this. So this is how important it is. Even though you, as a human being, don't read anything except that you're willing, except that you're trying to find information, except that you're trying to come to an understanding. Over here, this is even more so important. Know this really well. Indeed, of a surety, the worldly life. Al Hayat al Dunya, the life that is a lowly life. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Whenever he talks about al halat al dunya, the worldly life, he calls it one of two things. Most of the time, just this one over here. Allah either calls it al ula in certain places of, of, in the Quran, or he calls it a dunya. Over here, he's calling it a dunya, and that's the norm within the Quran. That it's a lowly life. A dunya means something that's low. So Allah wants you to know the reality of this lowly life. Anna al halat al dunya. And then when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to recognize that reality, first He reminds you of the fact that this is not just like all of the other passages, read and move on, even though the other passages were also commanded to ponder. But this is even more so exaggerated and important. Ir'lamu, recognize. Annama, indeed of a surety. But this particular word, annama, it's a little bit unique in that it emphasizes all that is to come. Everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to say, Allah is emphasizing it. But at the exclusion of any other possibilities. Allah is going to give you a few possibilities about what life is. There's no other possibilities. You think about it and you ponder it. Most of the people, their lives are within these possibilities. For some few people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen, and they themselves have made the effort, then their course of life becomes, start, starts to become slightly different. What are these possibilities? Allah says, The first and foremost, it's just playing around. It's child play. It's childish, foolish things that we do. And you know what? When we look at these possibilities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us over here, we're actually going to recognize the stages of life that we all go through. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to strike a brilliant, and everything in the Quran is brilliant, a brilliant parable to hit it right home. Run. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Indeed, the worldly life, the lowly life, it's life. When a person is born, what happens? For those of you that have little siblings, or for those of you that actually have children as well, you all know when you see a child, they do a couple of things, right? That's all they do. Number one, they're going to either use the bathroom, they're going to drink some milk, or they're going to play around and do nothing else, right? So this is the first. 
first phase of life, Allah calls it la'ib. A child is just going to be playing around, doing nothing, neither something that's going to benefit his soul, nor something that's going to fulfill his desires. He doesn't have animalistic desires yet. He hasn't gotten to that age. But as you grow slightly older, the parents start to say something. They say, we need to keep our children busy. They're breaking things in the house. They're causing a ruckus. They can't let us have a conversation peacefully. We need to have them busy with something. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the second phase of life, لَعِبٌ وَلَهُمْ Then comes that phase, which is an occupational phase. But occupation and useless things still. لَهُمْ Just useless matters being occupied in them. You give a child something, you know, tell them to run from here to there and there to here, they'll do it for three hours. And they'll continue to do it and they'll have fun in it. Even though there's nothing useful about it, except the fact that their body is benefiting. But the point is that if you give them even something that doesn't benefit their bodies, just tell them to repeat one word 3,000 times. They'll do it 15,000 for you. Right? Why? Because this is the phase of life, lahu, doing useless things. Things that have no benefit, no meaning within them, neither for the religion, neither for the soul, nor for the body. But sometimes what happens is, people get stuck in those phase, that phase of life. People get stuck in that phase of life, right? Video games, there are video games out there, yes there are. Some that may be a little bit educational, I admit. But there's gonna be other ones that are not educational at all. But a person that is 35, a person that's 40 years old, and I believe you me, I met a person in the plane who's 50 years old. 50 years old. And I asked him what he does, he's got a business, and then he opened his iPad and started printing angry birds. Right? That was useless. It doesn't help him at all. But people get stuck in this phase. And that's why we say these things are childish. As the poet says, that it is something ugly. It is something extremely ugly for a grown man to act like a child. But what's even more worse and what's even more ugly is when an elderly individual comes and starts to act like that grown man. What do I mean by that? There's things that are considered socially acceptable and socially normal for a 30-year-old man to do. And then there's things that are for a 25-year-old man to do. But then there's things that are considered socially normal for a person that's a little bit older, 50 and 60. There's a different norm for how this person is supposed to carry himself. But sometimes what happens to us is we get stuck in those phases. Which phase are you going to be in? We're not going to go and tell the little child that's playing around and doing things that have no benefit within them that you know what, you're, you should stop doing this. He's not going to understand what you're telling him. But are we doing childish things? Are we still stuck in the childhood phase? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues and he gets to the next phase. He says, وزينتم. And then comes after that, beautification. After that comes beautification. If you go to a high school or early university, right? If you go to a high school or early university, you'll see people beautified right to their nose. Every single person. For girls, they'll have their nail polish, the rings, everything will be done. For brothers and guys, they'll have their way of doing things as well. Everything will be fully beautified because now they've passed adolescence. They're now re reaching the adulthood or early adulthood. And around that time is the time where a person likes to beautify himself. Give it a couple of years. The same guy that's got his shoe shiny when he gets to his 30s, he won't worry about that anymore. Give it a couple of years, the same guy that's got his hair done every single day, when he gets to his 25, 30, again, he won't be worried about that anymore. This is the norm of life. This is the norm of life. And just like that is the norm of something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will speak about. After that comes what the fahu. Then comes this fahu. Wazina. What the fahu. Then comes the phase where people start to boast. Imagine yourself in your mind right now, a man that's 35, that's 37, that's gotten to his 40s now. The type of conversation that people have around that age, 40, 45 even. A lot of times the conversations go something like this. When they're sitting in a gathering, it will be nothing but boasting. When I was 15 years of age, you know, I almost won 
the national national badminton cup for my high school. When I was 15 years of age, you don't know, I came first in my class. The other guy was like, you know what? You came first in your class, I was first in the whole district. Tafahur. It's a mutual way of boasting. Everybody's gonna be boasting and trying to boast, out boast one another. Because now they really feel, even though they can, but they feel internally that they can't do anything anymore to reach somewhere. But the person that's connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he recognizes that all of these phases of life, that's one thing. But then there is the connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is everlasting. You look at this particular verse, and you look at the fact that a child is growing when he's simply a child. There's one thing when he grows a little bit older, there's another thing when he grows even more older, there's a third thing when he grows even further, then there's a fourth thing, and after that there's a fifth. What's the fifth? The Kaato! 60 year old people, 70 year old people, what are they doing? Counting money. If the person has lived his life the way he wanted to throughout his life, right now, even if he's a millionaire, he wants some more money. You tell the teenager, if you want a million dollars, he'll be happy with a million. You tell a 60 year old man, you want a million? And he's already a millionaire, so no, I want three, I want four, I want five, because my counterpart down the street's got four. I have to have the five. Takadu. It will be in awlaq, it will be in children. A teenager does not recognize the fifth now of children. We don't recognize it when you were really young. We don't understand that. You don't understand the fitna, the trial, the tribulation of having children and wanting more and more and more because you're not in that phase. When you get to that phase, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, then what do you want? But the God. You want more and more and more of money and of children. And that's exactly what happens in our lives. But on the side of all of that is another thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the example of all of this is kamathari the example of all of what I've said is like the example of a rain. The example of a rain. Kuffar, meaning the farmers, they are so shocked. Kuffar, by the way, amongst the meanings is a farmer. Because kafara means to cover. A farmer, what does he do? He takes the seeds and he covers them up in dirt. So that's why kuffar, or farmers are also called kufar. That's amongst the meanings. This is how the Prophet Sarud explained this verse. And in fact, some people even say that the word cover in Arabic, in English, actually comes from the word kafa. You can even hear it. Kafa, cover, kafa, cover. Because kafa means to cover something up. So, a kufar over here, or the kufar over here, are in reference to the farmers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, it's like the rain. The farmers are awestruck at the type of vegetation that will come out of it because of this. Okay? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Then this vegetation is going to grow big, and after it big becomes big, it will become strong and stiff. It will start to become stiff. Haja, for those of you that know Arabic, Haja, sometimes you say that about people, sometimes you say that about an animal, sometimes you say that about a desire. When it starts to become tyrannical, you say haja. Why? Because when you start to become tyrannical, or when the animal starts to become tyrannical, what happens? There's a noise that comes from it. Whether you like it or not, you'll start breathing hard. Whether the animal likes it or not, it'll start also breathing hard. To sort of get the message across that I'm not as content as I seem right now. I, deep down inside, am very troubled at the moment. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when the trees become to this level of hayajan, meaning when the trees become so large, big, and now they're about to fall. The leaves are about to fall. When they're getting close to that, the leaves become stiff. And when the wind flows through those leaves, you hear a you hear the hayajan. Just as you would do in human beings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the example of all of that is rain falling, and that rain falling makes it seem like, you know, this tree is going to look really nice, and people around the farmers are saying, this tree is going to look beautiful when the nabat comes out, when the vegetation comes out, it grows, it becomes thick and powerful. After it does all of that, what happens now? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ثُمَّ تَوَاهُ مُسْفَرَ then you will see, then you will see this vegetation all yellow. You will see the leaves become all yellow. And what happens to human beings? They 
grow old, they look beautiful, you think they're going to do a lot of things. As they grow old, your skin becomes all pale, it starts to become pigmented, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you that example. You will look at it and you'll think it's useless now. Similarly, an old man, when, we, when people look at an old man in society, they start to feel bad for him. They feel sorry for him. Someone said, said even though the man can walk, even though he can do everything for his life, a strong one especially, but people in the society, they start to feel bad. They start to think, oh, this guy is gone pale, he's going to die soon. Right? May Allah protect and preserve all of you. But that's how people think. That's why Allah says, He doesn't say it becomes Muslim, it becomes yellow. He says, when you look at it, it will seem as if it's yellow. When you look at that old man, it seems as if he's weak. But he inside, he's probably got a higher will than a lot of us. Then you see it, pale. Then it comes to an end. That is the example of life. But that example of life is the example of life for a person that is not leading it properly. I say this because this is the example of life for a person whose actions have not become such that they outlive time. Actions that live, outlive time are those actions that are done for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who himself lives on as time proceeds. Who himself will outlive time. So if you want to live on as everything else is passing away, just like these trees, then you have to look into your actions. Are you doing them for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or are you doing them for other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.
So he brings the fire first and foremost. Number two, he wants us to stop from this. And then he gives us two rewards. And not one, even though this has an adjective. Let me put it this way. If I was to say that you're going over there and that man is pretty dangerous, but I'm going to send two security guards with you. Do you feel safe now? You feel safe because no matter how dangerous that man is, he's just one person. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you two securities. Min Allah, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and also on top of that, Ridwan. Pleasure. We always say, Allah Sahaba, Allah is pleased with them, they are pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You want Ridwan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then do what He's going to tell you next in this particular commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The ulama, they said the whole surah, surah al hadith this is Fadlakun, Masukun, Masafat Taqeen. Special 
pleasure. You're going to get things from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you weren't even able to imagine. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the tawfiq to practice, to convey. ربنا أعطنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة أعطنا عذاب النار وادخل الجنة مع الأبرار يا عزيز يا غفار وأقم الصلاة إن الصلاة تكعن الفحشاء والمنكر ولذلك الله أكبر الله يعلم ما تصنع